Hey, what's up guys? And welcome to Coffee of Clement. And today, we're gonna talk about which kind of brew is best for you. Hi, I'm Clement. And today, we're gonna talk about another passion of mine, coffee. I worked as a barista a few years ago, and during that time, I developed quite an interest in coffee. If we wanted, we could talk about coffee for hours and hours, but today we're going to keep it simple and we're going to narrow down the subject to just the type of brews. I have reached a point in my coffee journey where I'm not sure anymore what kind of coffee and which type of brew I enjoy the most, so I'm going through a process to try and find out, and I'm taking you along for the journey. So today we're going to focus on the type of brews to try and see which one I prefer and which one might be the one for you. For home brewing, there are mainly three types of brews. Drip filtration, immersion, and pressurized infusion. A few other types exist, like vacuum filtration, percolation, and decoction, but they're not that common, and I don't own the respective machines needed, so we'll keep them separate for another time. So let's quickly go in detail into each of the methods we'll be using today before jumping into our coffee showdown. Drip filtration is pretty easy. You put ground coffee in a filter on top of your recipient and you pour water over it. You wait a little bit, do a few swirls and stirs if you're feeling fancy, and you have coffee. It's the method used in most homebrewers, and it's probably the easiest. It's the one that I've been using the most, and I tend to like the results that I get with it. Immersion, like its name suggests, consists of immersing the coffee in water, waiting a bit, and actually that's pretty much it. You can go about it in a couple of ways, filtering after the brew or using a coffee bag, or even just stirring to have the coffee sink to the bottom before drinking it carefully. This method is the one most used in coffee tasting, because it's quite easy to replicate, it's quite quick, and it leaves pretty much everything in the cup, so you're really tasting the coffee and not the brewing method. Finally, pressurized infusion requires pressure, often quite a bit, to have water go through the coffee and extract as much as possible during the process. This is probably the process with the most variation from one method to the next, as the water can be coming from the top at very high pressure, like in an espresso machine, or from the bottom as steam in a mocha pot, for example. These methods usually require a bit more energy, so that's why they're usually either an electric appliance or you might need some external heat. There's one way uh, that's quite simple and quite cheap where you can do one by hand and I'll show it to you later. All right, now that we know about the type of brews, let's talk about our brewers for the day. First of all, representing the drip filtration, the pour over coffee. This cone sits on top of a mug with a filter and coffee and you'll pour the water on top. This particular one is not the best, as it only has a small hole at the bottom to slow down the draw time of the brew, but it will do for today, and if it wins, I'll consider buying a proper V60. For this brew, I'll be using the James Hoffman method. I'll put a link to it in the description. Go check it out, it will help you get the most out of your drip brewer. Next, for the immersion brew, we'll be using a French press. It's easy, you put coffee, water, give it a stir, you wait for 4 minutes, and then you push down the plunger to keep the coffee grounds inside the pot. And that's it. I also have some coffee bags, but this one is not the same coffee as the other one, so I'm just showing you so you know it exists, but I'll exclude it from the taste test. Finally, for the pressurized infusion, we'll have three contestants. First of all, the mock pot. You fill the bottom with water till the valve, put coffee in the basket and put it on the bottom of the brewer, close everything tightly and put it on the stove. Try and have a temperature that's not too high nor low, and wait for the gurgling sound to know the brew is over. Next, the manual one, the AeroPress. This is probably the one that I use the most in this category, as I'm very often making coffee while I'm up at the house. For this one, it's pretty easy. Put a filter and some coffee at the bottom, set it on top of your mug, fill the brewer with water, and set the plunger in place. To get the most out of your coffee, I recommend waiting a couple of minutes, and then, just press the plunger manually until you reach the bottom and you have pressurized infusion by hand. It's not going to be as extracted as an espresso or a coffee from the mock pot, but you can still get a very nice cup of coffee out of it. Finally, the espresso machine. 
the king of takeaway coffee around the world. I have this cheapish espresso machine that I'll be using today. It has a pressurized basket. Think of it like training wheels on the bike. And it probably brews at not as high as temperature as a good espresso machine, but it will do for today. Preparing an espresso is probably the most time consuming and finicky of all our coffee types today. First, you need to have quite a specific grind for your coffee. Then you put some in the basket, use a tamper to get it nice and compressed, put it back on the machine, pre-infuse the coffee with a bit of water to get a bit more extraction and pressure, and then, finally, pass the water through the coffee to end up with a beautiful shot of coffee. This particular type of shot of coffee is almost unique to the espresso machine, as only the pressure manages to create this coffee foam on top that a lot of people are looking for. By the way, it's called the crema, and the shot is also composed of two other parts. The heart at the bottom, which to me looks mesmerizing, with its deep brown that almost seems to swell around. And between the heart and the crema, you'll find the body in the middle that links everything together. Just so you know, I'm still not great at using the espresso machine, and I might be doing a ton of things wrong. So, if you want to learn how to use one properly, I highly suggest that you find someone who knows what they're doing. Anyway, back to our experiment. I have with me the different coffees that I have brewed with those five methods. I would have liked to do a blind tasting, but I don't even have two of the same mugs, and buying five identical ones was not in the budget. Anyway, given the different methods, I would have probably been able to tell them apart from each other, as a brew that's been filtered through a paper filter will probably be more clear and a bit more translucent, as a brew from a French press, for example, which is only filtered with a metal mesh, will be more opaque, and it's easy to tell them apart. Also, the espresso is the only one with crema. About the coffee I'll be using today, it's a medium roast Kenya coffee from White Rose. I'm using whole beans coffee, and I'll be grinding them by hand. I've decided to use this one as I believe it has a flavor profile that I should enjoy. And overall, it's pretty good quality coffee. Usually you can tell if it has the roast date on the bag. As I'm not comparing coffees today with brewing methods, I will keep the tasting process simple and I won't go into too much depth about the taste itself. This next part is non-scripted, so I have no idea where this is going. But we have coffee and it's time to try it. I'm going to start with the espresso. Cheers. So with this particular amount of coffee, and with this kind of coffee, you feel the acidity of the coffee very much. He has like a lot of, like the, the flavors are really strong. You can really, it feels like a bit thick, a bit like caramelly almost. It's actually really nice. This one is the pour over coffee, so let's see how it tastes. All right, this one is way, way less intense and it's way more balanced. Like you can still feel the, the taste of the coffee and everything, but it's a bit more muted compared to the espresso. It's, in a way, it's an easier cup of coffee for everyday use because it's not gonna attack you in the face with all the flavors from the coffee. Wait, I quite like this one. So at least I know that my choice of coffee was not super outlandish and I still enjoy this particular coffee and it's actually really nice. Like freshly ground coffee, any kind of brew that you can make, usually is gonna be a good one. Yes, that's the French press. Okay, first of all, the the taste is similar in a way to the to the pour over filter more than the espresso, uh, in that that it's more balanced, more muted. But at the same time I feel like it tastes a little bit more bitter. And also this one feels quite heavy on the tongue, like it kind of stays there. It's, I think it's something with the French press because like the metal filter will not filter the coffee oils on the beans and you'll get this kind of heavy feeling, heavy mouth feel uh, with this kind of brew, which I don't particularly enjoy, but you might. It's something that's quite similar with the espresso, but with the espresso, since it goes with like so much pressure, it kind of froth it up. And the espresso gets this light quality to it, like not, I'm not gonna compare it to eating whipped cream, 
but it feels a bit like it. Yeah, even now the espresso feels a bit lighter. Next we're gonna try the Aeropress. Uh, the Aeropress is kind of a weird mix because it has a filter, a bit like the pour over, and it has a bit of pressure by the espresso, but the filter should be stopping the coffee oils, so we'll find out. Ooh, actually I quite like this one. It's a bit stronger than the pour over and the French press with like the coffee taste. Like you can feel the taste of the coffee a bit more and you can try and highlight a few of the different aromas of the coffee. But at the same time, it doesn't slap you in the face like the espresso. It's a bit more acidic than those two, so if you don't like an acidic coffee, maybe the the, the Aeropress is not for you. But for me, it's quite a good balance between having this slight acidity to it and tasting the coffee very well, but not like the espresso, which is, like as I said like two times already, a, a big slap in the face. I definitely like this one. All right, the last one, the mocha pot. I feel, I feel like this one's gonna be very strong. Yeah, this one is strong. This one is quite bitter, so I think I might have uh, ground a bit too thin. And I would say it's a bit stronger than the Aeropress. And at the same time, it feels a bit more bitter than the Aeropress. And I'm not sure that I like that, at least not with that coffee. Oh, the espresso, as it's going down, is really nice because you really get more of that coffee taste, in a way, and a bit less of that strong acidity to it. They're really pleasant coffee, and for like an everyday coffee, this one's perfect. It's easy to drink, it's not like you can serve that to anyone, and they'll probably like it. Alright, we definitely got some pretty interesting results. I think for me, I will be sticking with the Aeropress for the moment. Because for today, it was the one that I liked the most. It was quite balanced, it put the coffee flavors forward, and at the same time, it was a really enjoyable brew. So yeah, that's my pick for today. You can let me know yours in the comments, whether this video changed your mind or not. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you today, and I hope that it helped you figure out which kind of brew would be the best for you. If you have any question or advice, please leave them in the comments, and I'll try and reply to all of them. Also, if you want to keep up with the content that I put out, please subscribe to the channel so you won't miss anything coming out in the future. Anyway, I hope you had a great time with me today, and I wish you a good day. Until next time, guys, stay caffeinated.